Hello to you all CFD learners. Welcome to session four of our Answer Smashing Master class. In the previous session, we actually talked about the global mesh metrics and also global mesh controls inside Answer Smashing. And as you may remember this hierarchy, you know that in the next step uh, inside the software, we need to know more about the local mesh controls, beginning with the mesh methods. In this uh, specific session, we're going to focus on mesh methods, including tetrahedrons elements. So as always, let me start by uh, actually dragging a geometry module to open a space claim and design our model. Very well. Our model today is established from two different parts. Actually, the, uh, one of them has some curvatures on it, which needs its specific uh, properties when it comes to meshing. And the other part is a single, uh, actually, cube. Uh, and uh, this represents two different features. And this is where that the actually local uh, parameters shines. So uh, let me just create this model. And then we can continue. So I want to hide the other part. And let's just pull this uh, off for 40 millimeter. And then uh, for the other side, I want to extend it for another 40 millimeter. And let's see the combination of these two. And very well. So uh, the other changes in modification that I want to apply is on these edges. Actually, as I said, I need curvature. And this is where uh, we have to have a perfect grid uh, in order to capture the whole uh, actually curvature. So uh, in my very last step, I just want to uh, subtract this one from this. And I guess this one is extra. So this is uh, one of our components and this is the other one. So you can see we expect to have hexagonal elements on this one with a structured grid because it is very simple uh, geometry. But for this one, we know that in these regions, we cannot easily uh, create hexagonal cells. So let's get back to Ansys Meshing. And I want to drop the meshing module on this to open ANSYS meshing. Very well. So inside ANSYS meshing, we can start by the meshing part. So as always, we need to select a physics preference. Of course, this is a CFD work, and this is why I selected CFD with a uh, fluent solver. The point is that in the previous session, we covered all of these global uh, mesh controls. And now we want to see what if we have distinct features for distinct components of our model. This is where actually the local the sizing and local mesh methods and the rest of the local options comes in. And you have access to them if you just simply right click on mesh and then from the insert tab, you would see the method, the sizing, the contact sizing and the rest of the options. So in today's session, we're going to focus on the methods. So uh, as you can see in here, by default, the software specified the automatic mesh method. And the other point that you have to know is that in Ansys Meshing, wherever you need to select anything, you would see the fill in yellow color until you specify the exact geometry. So uh, this time, as you know, uh, we can uh, start by different methods that are listed in here. And on top, you could see the uh, automatic. So let me just specify both regions together. I mean, both bodies. And after selecting these two, you could see that the methods are listed right here. So uh, the point is that by using the automatic option, the software itself uh, automatically detects the geometry features and tries to generate the method uh, based on the best, uh, actually, uh, perceived one. So as you can see in here, it established a structured grid on this uh, rectangle up here because it's very pretty simple. But when it comes to this part, you can see for this curvature still, it is trying to use hexagonal cells, uh, which is not uh, appropriate for this part. And uh, this is where the other method comes in. It is tetrahedron's elements. 
So you have to know that this method creates a mesh using tetrahedral elements, which are like 3D triangle pyramids. So it works in two steps. In the first step, which is called patch meshing, first it covers the outside surfaces of your model with 2D triangles. And then in the second step, which is called conforming or volume meshing, it fills the inside of the model with 3D tetrahedrons that match the triangle on the surface. So let me select this one. And before doing anything else, I just want to regenerate the method and the mesh and you would see the result. So right now we know that a priority always is hexagonal cells due to its higher quality uh, and lower computational load. So uh, I can say that for this part, we can keep the uh, hexagonal cells. But for this one, as you can see now, we, for this curvature, we could successfully cover it with great and high quality grid. So this is where I can deselect this body and have only this body selected. So from now on, uh, this patch conforming method or the tetrahedron uh, method that we are flying in here will be applied only on this part. And for the other part, the software automatically uses the global uh, controls that we set in here. So this would be result. You can see that uh, we've got hexagonal cells on this part and tetrahedron that we actually previously applied on the other part. So let's get through all of the settings up here. So on top, you would see the scope section this section tells Asus where to apply this mesh method. So uh, you remember that we selected this body and this is why uh, this material will be applied only on this body. Then uh, it comes uh, the definition section and beneath that you would see this suppressed. So uh, during our work in Asus meshing, we, we may repeatedly want to modify the settings and uh, see the effects and if you uh, actually turn it off. I mean, if you just put no, it means that this mesh method is active and will be used. But if you suppress this method, no longer it will be applied. And you can see it's like that. It is just not in here. And you could see this cross sign near it. So we just get back to our global uh, mesh controls because it is suppressed. So if you want to apply it and uh, see the effects, you have to get back to the no actually option. The next one is the method. And as we said, in this session, we're going to cover tetrahedron elements, but of course you have access to different types of methods. Uh, all are important, especially the hex dominant, the sweep and multi-zone also, the tetrahedrons. And uh, then it comes the algorithm. So you can see by default, it is on patch conforming. As I said, the steps through generating the tetrahedron elements starts with the patching, which uh, also called the surface meshing. So what it is, uh, this is the specific technique ANSYS uses. As we said, it's a bottom-up method that meshes surfaces first and then the volume. It is very robust and works well for almost any complex geometry. But uh, as you select this arrow on the right side, you would see that we have another option, which is called patch independent method. Think of your 3D model or the geometry as being made of many small surface pieces or patches. So when selecting patch uh, independent method, this method is smarter. It first shrinks wraps the geometry, creating a new clear surface to mesh on. It doesn't worry about every tiny, original patch. This is excellent for complex or dirty geometry with the small errors as it ignores them and creates a good quality mesh anyway. So in short, I should say use patch independent for complex model or when other methods fail. And uh, this section, as you can see, will uh, give you access to more advanced options regarding the max element size, the feature angle and uh, the min size limit. So, uh, as you know, we had them uh, previously in the global mesh controls, so you can get back to them. But uh, I want to actually define some of them that are actually much more important, uh, starting with define by. Uh, 
as you can see, this drop down lets you choose which main setting you want to control. So for example, it could be the max element size, or it could be the approximate number of elements per part. And uh, let me continue with the max element size, which is more uh, common. And then it comes the max element size. Uh, and the software asks you to specify the maximum one. So by default, the software detected 9 millimeter for uh, acceptable max element size. Uh, so let's just generate to see the default one. So this would be the result. You can see that the maximum size uh, is actually limited to nine millimeter. I can just uh, update it with five millimeter. So uh, in some way, I'm setting the largest allowed size for any elements in this body. This is a key setting to control mesh density, of course. And now you can see that uh, our maximum cell size would be limited to five millimeters from now on. The next option uh, is the, the feature size. Uh, we defined the mesh the featuring in the previous session. Uh, so right now, once again, we have access to this and also the curvature mean size and proximity if you have any gaps in your uh, actually uh, geometry model. So we're not going to delve into them. Uh, you can just get back to session three to understand what are these options and how they can affect your grid. So uh, let me get back to um, patch conforming once again. Uh, we don't need this. So uh, in these advanced options, uh, you will see the featured angle. Uh, it helps the measure decide when to capture sharp corners. If the angle between two faces is great and this value, the measure will put a sharp edge there. If it's smaller, it might smooth its order. And then the mesh based the featuring an automatic way to remove very small details or features from the mesh after it's created or improve quality and speed. Uh, but as I said, by default, uh, we uh, actually rarely use the patch independent option because the patch conforming gives us better options. And after uh, selecting and defining all of the settings in here, we can get back to control a mesh grid via global mesh metrics. Uh, and also in the next step, uh, you will see uh, about the uh, body sizing, uh, and it is another uh, important feature inside ANSYS machine with its combination with the uh, patch conforming that we are learning in here uh, would be the best option to apply a specific grid on the whole body. So uh, I guess uh, you now uh, learn uh, a bit about the algorithm. Uh, it is not very important, but uh, you have to know something about it. Then it comes the element order. Uh, so you can see, but default, you use global settings. So we already know about global settings that we set in here, and uh, we covered it all in the previous session. But if you uh, click, you would see that you have also the linear and the quadratic option. So uh, by using the global setting, the software will use the settings you chose in the main mesh details panel. If you select linear, elements have nodes only at the corners. This creates a simpler, faster mesh, but is less accurate. And finally, the quadratic uh, actually is, uh, option. Uh, the elements have extra nodes in the middle of their edges, and this captures curve better and is more accurate, but it takes more computer power. So once again, I can say the most common option that we use inside ANSYS meshing is uh, the global settings. And this is why I said you don't need to select either of these uh, options. And after selecting the tetrahedrons, it would be much better to get back to mesh global controls and define your specific and desired values in there. In the next section, you would see the advanced improved options, starting with aggressive thin face collapse and also automatic node movement. As it says, uh, these are some uh, advanced options, and these options let ASUS automatically try to fix and improve the mesh quality. The point is that the aggressive thin uh, face collapse uh, by default and previously set is on program control. And this tool looks very small, 
thin triangle elements on the surface mesh. This can create bad quality 3D elements, and this option tries to collapse or remove them. And then it comes the automatic node movement, and once again, it automatically is set on program control. So what it is? After the mesh is made, this tool will slightly move the nodes around to improve the shape of the elements. It tries to make the elements more uniform and less stretched or squashed. So uh, you would see that uh, some other options are provided in here, but um, they are no longer a concern in this session, uh, and they rarely use, and um, you rarely need them. And finally, it comes the refinement options, uh, and as the title suggests, uh, this refinement would be applied on thin sections. So in case you have thin sections in your model, uh, this option can help. So uh, this option will look for very thin regions in your 3D model. And if you just select no, the mesh will not have extra details in this area. But if you select yes, you would see that the software will give you uh, automatically mesh to make uh, actually elements smaller in those thin regions to capture the geometry more accurately. This is useful for models with thin walls or fins. So uh, regarding the model that we already have, this option cannot help because we don't have any thin option. So regarding the tetrahedron cells mesh method, I can regenerate my cells. And right now you could see the results. So as you know, this mesh is not uh, very appropriate for a model. And um, this is where I'm saying that we need to get back to global mesh controls to limit our mesh elements, for example, to two millimeters. But we already know that this will be applied on the whole geometry regarding uh, this curved and uh, this curved Ashley model and the other component. So uh, once again, uh, we can say that uh, this tetrahedron um, mesh method uh, is the best option when you're dealing with curved services like here. And uh, in this uh, type of geometries, uh, this would be your first and prior selection. So in the next session, we're going to cover the other mesh methods, uh, starting with hex dominant, and the rest of the options will be covered in the next and future sessions.